Um, I will talk about some of our projects in AI and healthcare and in medicine. I'm Theresa Roland and I'm postdoc at the Institute for Machine Learning. Um, I will give a high level overview of our projects in of machine learning for intensive care and for histopathology and for ophthalmology. And I will go into more detail uh, about our recent project about COVID-19 diagnosis and mortality risk on the basis of blood tests. In the Medical Cognitive Computing Center, we have a cooperation with the Department of Intensive Care and Anesthesiology from the Kepler University Clinic in Linz, and also with the, with the RISC in Hagenberg. And in this project, we have four main tasks. In the first one, we predict whether the patients will be readmitted to the intensive care unit after discharge. So at the time point of ICU discharge, we predict whether the patient will be readmitted. And we want to avoid readmissions because this poses the patients at a high risk and it also causes costs. On the other hand, if the patient already is safe for being discharged, then we want to discharge him or her because we want to free their resources. Then we also do mortality prediction at the time point of the emergency room admission. So at this time of the admission, only very few features are known. So we know, for example, the age, the sex, body temperature, blood pressure or heart rate of the patient. And we train machine learning models on these features. And then we predict whether the patient will survive or die within 30 days. And this is just an exemplary um, label. So we also predict, for example, whether the patient will be admitted to an intensive care unit. In the cardiac instability, we predict whether the blood pressure will drop into a critical level, so below a certain critical blood pressure threshold. And we give an alarm uh, early enough to still allow an intervention so that the patient doesn't drop into this critical range. In the blood transfusion, we predict whether a blood transfusion causes complications within the next few days. And such a complication can be, for example, kidney failure. We have a project in the field of histopathology imaging, and here we have a cooperation with the Department of Pathology also from the Kepler University Clinic in Linz. And histopathology imaging always works with tissue sections. Tissue sections are very thin cuts of human tissue. And this is then stained. This is the so-called H and E staining. And this gives this uh, pink bluish images. And if you zoom in, then you can see the cells and also the nuclei of the cells. And on the basis of these images, we do, for example, a classification, whether the tissue is tumorous or non-tumorous, or, or we classify the, the molecular subtypes. This can be uh, important, for example, um, because the molecular subtype can define whether the tumor is very aggressive or not, how the disease will progress, or how susceptible the tumor is for chemotherapy. Uh, a special thing to mention here is that these uh, histopathology images are very high resolution images. So they are in the gigapixel range and we cannot process them at once on the GPU. Therefore, we have to, to split the big host light image into multiple tiles. And here you can see one of these tiles and we process one tile after the other on the GPUs. And afterwards, the neural networks then can merge the information um, again. And the neural networks also can give importance values of these tiles, which then allows the interpretability of how the model came to the classification it made. Um, we have a project in ophthalmology with the Medical University from Vienna. This project just started. Uh, ophthalmology is a very important field in medical imaging because a lot of people are affected by eye diseases. So worldwide, uh, 900 million people suffer from blindness or severe vision loss. 
This is mainly caused by age-related macular degeneration or diabetic retinopathy. And then there's also a vast amount of OCT images and fundus images around, because if you go to an eye doctor, then they routinely take an OCT image. We want to process uh, this amount of images and then make objective diagnosis. We also want to make predictions of the disease progressions. We want to uh, predict how patients will respond to specific therapies. And we also want to extract biomarkers. So these are uh, features which define how the disease will progress or how um, the patient will respond to therapy. And we also want to extract subpopulations, so-called clusters of patients with specific disease progression or therapy response. <clears throat> so now we come to a COVID-19 diagnosis on the basis of blood tests. And these blood tests are enhanced by machine learning models. And we built the machine learning models for in-hospital application. The RT-PCR tests have some disadvantages, so they are very expensive and slow. And you always need staff who, who takes the swab, and you always need, need a lab who does the testing procedures, so that the testing capacity somehow is limited. <clears throat> and this is especially the case in developing countries. In the hospital, the inpatients are routinely only tested at the time point of the admission. And outpatients might not be tested at all for COVID-19. <clears throat> and antigen tests have a limited accuracy. Therefore, we suggest to use the COVID-19 diagnosis on the basis of blood tests. And to enrich this blood test, which machine learning is, is very cheap and also fast. And we can scan the routinely acquired blood tests with the machine learning models. So these blood tests are not, are not acquired additionally, so they are acquired anyways in the routine process. So this allows a very broad screening in the hospital because a lot of blood tests are taken every day in the hospital. These, these COVID-19 diagnosis based on blood tests can be a substitute or a replacement of the antigen test. Again, we take the features. So here we have the blood test features and we also add age and sex of the patient. And then we train the machine learning model and we predict whether the patient is COVID-19 positive or negative. And we do the same thing for the COVID-19 positive patients where we predict whether the patient will survive or die with corona. We take the blood test of the year 2020 from the RT-PCR tested patients and we merge them with the test result. So we take the blood tests up to 48 hours before the PCR test, we merge them. And based on this blood sample, we then predict the PCR test result. And we also take the blood test from the year 2019. <clears throat> and we assume that these are all negatives because COVID-19 was not around at this time in Austria. And this then gives us about 79,000 negatives and 1,000 positives. We achieve pretty good results with these models. So for COVID-19 and mortality prediction, we trained different models. And Random Forest has about 0.965 ROC AUC. And the ROC AUC test is a metric that we use in machine learning. And it tells how good positives and negatives can be differentiated. And for a random estimator, the ROC AOC is 0 0.5. And for a perfect estimator, it would be 1. So yeah, here we achieve 0 0.65. And for mortality, 0 0.88. These results, however, have to be looked at with care, because domain shifts have not been considered in these results. Domain shifts are changes of the, of the underlying distribution of the data over time. And <clears throat> this can affect the, the machine learning models. So the predictive performance can drop because of the domain shifts. And also the model credibility can be affected. 
And such domain shifts obviously occur during pandemics. For example, the age of the newly infected patients uh, changed or the testing strategy changed or the lockdowns can also affect the demographics of the people who get infected and virus mutations might affect um, the blood tests of the positive patients. So we had a look at our blood test features, and how they, if they changed over time, and we indeed see some fluctuations. And we investigated whether the domain shifts affect the predictive performance and also whether the domain shifts affect the model credibility. In machine learning, we always take a test set. Um, we use this to, to estimate the generalization performance. So this is um, how the model will perform on, on future unseen data. Um, if we randomly sample the test set from our whole data set, then we get a rock AOC of 0 0.965. But if we make a temporal split, so if we train the model until end of October and test it on November and December, then the rock AOC drops significantly. And the same is the case for the mortality prediction. We also investigated uh, the effects of the retraining frequency with high retraining frequency, uh, the rock AOC remains higher. So it's important to frequently retrain the models to, to have high, high model performance. And we also found that um, higher weighting of more recent samples increases the ROC AUC. And in the investigations for the, for the model credibility, we compared the expected and the actual performance. And we saw that this can deviate significantly, especially in November and December. <clears throat> so um, this is very bad in hospital applications because there we want to have trustworthy machine learning models. So this indicates that it is highly important to frequently reassess the machine learning models to allow the hospital application. Okay, thank you for your attention.